Hello everyone, welcome to the Lewis Cooper Experience Podcast Experience, episode 15. See how I did that? Just came to me. Um, yeah, I'm Lewis Cooper, welcome. Um, I'm not going to say welcome back, because it annoys me when YouTube people say welcome back, because what is this, this is your first time watching, and you're saying welcome back, and then it doesn't make sense, so it's fine. But um, I want to talk about two things today, really, and then at the end, for those that stick around, I've got a little bit of exclusive Lewis Cooper news. Um nothing about me personally but just something you can expect coming up soon there'll be a little reward for people who stick around which I, which I appreciate when people watch the whole thing um i want to talk about movie of the week uh, which is the fly from 1986 and also i want to talk about the first episode of falcon and winter soldier um because normally i do the disney plus shows as like a separate video so i do i did a mandalorian series 2 in one division and um i found them quite difficult to do as just a single video so i'm just going to chuck this one in here with um with this um regular thing that i wanted to start doing more regularly again um and plus uh, they didn't get too many views really which you know it doesn't really bother me i do these things because i like doing them and this doesn't get too many views either so i'm just combining them into one video that won't get many views but doesn't matter does it if you're watching this i appreciate you i really do honestly leave a comment and a like thanks um so let's get started with movie of the week so as previously mentioned movie of the week is the 1986 horror movie the fly um and this is a movie that i hadn't seen before this week but obviously i knew of it it's quite a notorious film and my only experience of it was the um simpsons parody of it which again they always do a great job of those um i think their shining parody is one of the finest parodies it's ever been but um yeah so obviously the, their version of the fly is quite different and i've never seen it and i've always had it down as a curiosity because i've only really recently got into horror films in the past five to ten years or so i know i don't look that old but i am um this film came out in 1986, which coincidentally was the year I was born, although my showbiz birth year is 1996, if anyone asks. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, I had it down as one of those ones where I thought, I, I like 80s horror, I like that kind of thing, I like the ingenuity, I like practical effects and stuff like that, and I mean, this is a great example of that, and I was expecting that, I was expecting kind of like the thing, like an old school horror with some real nice ingenuity and practical stuff that you can appreciate as well as enjoy the film but it was a lot more than that I, I really found this film to be really good like genuinely engaging above all the stuff that i was expecting um it's a very young jeff goldblum as is well known as one of his probably one of his big early roles um quite a while before you know jurassic park and stuff like that and gina davis is in it as well and you know there's not too many of the characters in it really it's quite small quite self-contained um and yeah, I, like I said, I, I really enjoyed it. I kind of, it's, it's a slow burner, which I like. I like it when films take their time. Like horror films nowadays, they have to have like some something, something scary happen in the first two minutes of the film. Whereas older horror films, they, they let it build up for 30 to 60 minutes kind of thing, which is quite nice. It's, I should say it's directed by David Cronenberg, who I know by name and reputation. He's kind of this body horror genre, as they call it. He's quite well known for. Um... And I think his son Brandon Cronenberg is also kind of following in his footsteps in a similar sort of vein of uh, filmmaking. But, um, but yeah, I say it, it was more than I expected. Like, um, it genuinely grossed me out a couple of times, which takes a lot because, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff and it's uh, it takes a lot to make me go, ooh, that kind of, you know, wince kind of thing. But this this did it. I say I won't go into too much detail in case you haven't seen the film and you want to watch it as per my recommendation. But, I mean, it's a nearly 35-year-old film, so, I mean... Yeah, if you if you don't know a lot about it by now, I'd be surprised. But still, you know, I didn't know some of the ins and outs. So that's, that, that that added to my enjoyment of it. Um, but yeah, but the um, the relationship between the main two characters, you kind of like, it's quite quite nice. And it's you know, it's not too in depth because it's only a ninety minute film. But you know, you you it, you can go with it kind of thing. Um, and Jeff Goldblum is really good as he kind of gradually transforms into this monster. And as he's kind of changing, it's just the the makeup effects and stuff. I think it's actually won an Oscar for the makeup and, and stuff like that, which is you know quite um, quite rare for a horror film to win an Oscar. Really, the only other one I can think of is The Exorcist. Um, but yeah, for the screenplay. But um, but yeah, the the gradual transformation is quite gross to see. But then when he fully transforms, and I don't think this is a spoiler to say when he transforms into the fly, the, the whole model and everything and how it's all done is absolutely brilliant, like genuinely, like just blew me away, I was like, 
practical effects age so much better than CGI. Like this 35 year old film still holds up pretty well, and like it look probably looks better than say a CGI heavy film from like five years ago probably would in my opinion. But um, but yeah, I I really liked it, and the kind of when it gets to the ending part, you kind of it got me a little bit kind of emotionally as well. I was kind of like yeah, it's um that you know really made you kind of feel for the the character in a weird way. But um but yeah. I think it is actually a remake of a, I think, 1958 Vincent Price film of a similar kind of vein, also called The Fly. I know that film had two sequels. I think this one has a sequel as well, which I haven't seen, but maybe I will check it out. Um, but yeah, um, like I say, it's been on my watch list for a while, and it's now on Disney Plus because, of course, it is. Like since they've added all the star stuff, and this is in the UK, um, they've added loads of stuff you never thought you'd click on play on Disney Plus. But sure enough, the body horror film <laughs> The Fly is on there so yeah I'd recommend it it's a good 90 sort of minute um, horror film um, and yeah genuinely impressive but yeah that's my film of the week and the other thing I wanted to talk about was the first episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier aired yesterday as I'm recording this um, I say aired but you know it's streamed I should say um, I won't go into too much detail so if you haven't seen it yet don't worry about spoilers but if you don't want to be spoiled then watch it first probably but um I'm I'm enjoying these new Disney Plus shows and stuff like that. Um, they, you know they have these huge budgets and they look like they could be straight out of a movie. And I feel like this one I think is six episodes. It's probably going to be just like a. I mean this episode is quite long. It's about 49 minutes. Um, I don't know if they'll all be that long, but it's just going to be kind of a longer movie chopped up into bits, which is cool. Um, I say Falcon and Winter Soldier aren't my favourite characters. Not that I dislike them. I'm just not that fussed about them. Like um, Bucky or Winter Soldier, I've never been that particularly a bigger fan of like everyone says like Winter Soldier is the best cap or the best Marvel movie and like you know I don't necessarily disagree but it's never really been my favorite because I'm not that bothered about Winter Soldier I do like Falcon I like him from the comics um, and it was cool when they brought him into it but again he's kind of I, I like him as a supporting player but not necessarily as a main character but at the same time I mean they're getting more time now they're gonna be fleshed out so I'll probably end up liking him more at the end of the series which is cool um, I like the idea of, actually I will say, Sebastian Stan looks a million times better with his short hair as opposed to long hair, so that's immediately an improvement. Um, I like his kind of whole thing about um, making reparations for um, his actions in the past, because you know, literally a mass murderer, um, but not under his own control, so that's uh, that's an interesting thing. Um, uh, Falcon, the whole thing about him not having any money is weird. Like. Um, like, I'll go with it, that's fine. And you know, his family being, um, or his sister being poor and stuff like that, or not poor, but struggling financially kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I saw someone on Twitter say, like, how can Avenger not have money? Like, he could just start a podcast and make loads of money. It's like, yeah, he literally could. Like, he's he's a superhero, he's probably got some interesting stories to tell. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's a good start. You can't really judge these things off of one episode because it's going to be a whole thing building up but I'm looking forward to it I mean I don't think there'll be anything in it that would I wouldn't enjoy um, and again slight spoilers I guess if you haven't seen it yet um, it was cool seeing George St. Pierre return as Batroc the, the, Batroc the Leaper um, he, he's great I like GSP um, mainly as a fighter I've only seen him in this one thing as an actor I don't know if he's anything else um, and also um, I really like Wyatt Russell, who turns at the end as John F. Walker, who's the, the the new Captain America, which is which is great. I really like that because, for one thing, John F. Walker, U.S. Agent, is one of my favourite comic book characters. Like I remember reading him in Avengers comics as a kid, and he's just he's just such a dick. Like I just I just found that really likable. And I recently read one of his mini series, um, just to kind of as I was getting ready to watch this sh this show kind of thing, and I was like, yeah, I need to read some more U.S. Agent because he was one of my favourites. Um, and the way he looks at the end is brilliant because he looks, you know, he looks pretty good in the suit. Um, but then his his face is just kind of like, you know, he's just not got that same stoicism to him, if that's the right word, that Captain America has kind of thing. He's just some guy who just looks quite happy to be in the Captain America suit with the shield. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that um, unwinds. Um, I feel like people are probably going to get annoyed about that and kind of go, oh, this guy is in Captain America. And it's like, well, yeah, that's, that's kind of the idea, I think. But we'll see. People are smart, hopefully. They might figure it out. Um, I'm not going to get into any kind of theorising on this one like I did in my WandaVision reviews because I just think it's a bit pointless. And I think people got way too in that, into that during WandaVision and it was just kind of like every week it was like, oh, this is the thing that's going to happen. It's like, just just enjoy it for what you it's presented to you as. Like, yeah, if, if there are little things that pop up, that's great. But 
I mean, what happened to things just being what they were and being a story and being enjoyed without people going, oh, I want to see this happen. And it's like, yeah, you know, just watch it. Shut up. No, it's fine. But yeah, that is uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier or The Falcon and The Winter Soldier, which is a bit more clunky to say, but that's what it's called. And lastly, if you've made it this far, which again, I do appreciate, um, I hopefully, actually almost 95% sure, I'm going to be releasing my new short film that I've been working on for over a month now probably, um, on I reckon this coming Tuesday, um, which will be the 23rd, yeah 23rd, um, maybe not, but definitely next week, um, and I, wanna, I, th I haven't told anybody about it really I think I've shown a couple of people tiny tiny bits but it's gonna be called are you ready the last man on the moon that is the official title of my upcoming short film so keep an eye out for that um, I worked really hard on this one it's 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 been a lot I've, I've done lots of um, lots of things that I haven't done before in it so three or four like completely new things that I've had to kind of learn how to do so yeah, it's more of a technical experiment than it is kind of just a film. So it's um, I'm looking forward to people seeing it. Like I said, it's pretty much finished now. I've just got a few bits to do, and all being well, hopefully if it doesn't get deleted again like what happened before, um, I'll be ready to upload it on Tuesday. But yeah, check back here then for that, um, and check out some other short films if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, they're all listed somewhere on here. But yeah. Um, so there you go, if you've made it to the end, that's a little exclusive for you, so just keep it between us, no, don't, tell your friends, um, and your enemies, but yeah, um, thank you very much for watching, as always, I appreciate it, please leave a like if you haven't already, please subscribe if you haven't already, and share it, why not, just tell your friends, they'll love it, probably, if they don't, uh, don't be friends with them anymore, but yeah, thank you very much, take care, bye. -bye.